Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from JWB2QQJ, and let's dive into it. Okay, here we go. Uh, this one is from J, uh, WB2QQJ, and he says, Good evening, Dave. I know how to hook up my antenna analyzer to measure resonance on the driven element of a Yagi. How would I hook up the analyzer to measure the resonant frequency of a director or reflector? Um, I don't often say this, and Jade, please don't take offense if I do, but you're asking the wrong question. Uh, and let me show you what is happening here. Okay, so here, here's a Yagi. You've got a director, you've got a driven element, and you've got a whole series, I'll make these a little shorter, of, that's the, this is called the, okay, this is the driven element. This right here is the reflector. And these are called directors. Okay, the driven element is the, it's a dipole. Uh, you can feed it a variety of ways. You can feed it just by splitting it in the middle and bringing your coax up to it, although that's uh, unbalanced feeding balance. Or you can put a little gamma match on here uh, it's got capacitor and so on, and feed it there unbalanced. Y y there's just all kinds of things that you can do to uh, feed this. And these are usually on a mast. The reflector is longer than the driven element. The directors are shorter than the driven element. And most of the radiation, most, not all, most of the radiation is in this direction. It was invented by a guy named, suitably, Yagi. Um, and he had a uh, assistant who often lends his name to this type of antenna too. Now, there are many, many different ways to make Yagis. And with the advent of design software, you can come up with some pretty ultra, pretty um, some pretty effective spacings uh, between these. They're not necessarily uniformly uh, uh, spaced. Now, what uh, uh, Jay is asking here is, he says he can take this and measure the impedance by putting an impedance meter here. Well, now, what you're measuring, Jay, when you check the impedance at the feed point here, you are looking at the, um, let's see, it's R plus JX, uh, or the impedance of the antenna as a whole. You don't have an impedance of each element. When you measure this and it's all set up, you are measuring the entire antenna. Okay, and now remember, it's hard to measure impedance at this point because um, unless you can get up on a very tall ladder or a bucket lift or something to put your antenna analyzer up there. But then the problem is, remember the rule one in uh, antennas is that everything affects everything. So the fact that you're inside the near field of this will cause you to uh, get a wrong measurement. Another thing you can do is to put a piece of coax that is electrically equal to uh, half of lambda. 
and then this impedance and this impedance will be the same. You can measure the feed point impedance that way. But you have to be very careful because you need to exactly know the velocity factor of this cable in order to figure that out. And sometimes the tables are wrong. Uh, okay, so I guess what I'm trying to say is if you have got this put together and you measure the feed point impedance here, uh, however you're going to measure it, you are measuring the whole antenna. The individual impedances don't matter. It's the ensemble that, that you're measuring the impedance of, okay? Um, so you put this up in place, and if you find that the thing is too low in frequency, you can shorten the driven element. If it's too long, you can lengthen the driven element. This is often done very simply by um, taking the tubing that's on your antenna and putting a smaller piece of tubing in here, okay, in a slit that's, you know, a quarter inch wide or something, and a clamp, hose clamp or something around here. So you tighten it up and this doesn't move. And if you need to lengthen it, you just loosen this up, move it out, or you can move it in if you want to shorten it. Okay. Now, so the bottom line of your question um, is that the impedance you are measuring is the ensemble impedance of the entire antenna. Okay. And so uh, if you're measuring this at your feed point in the shack, uh, you have got just a random length wire here. So you're measuring the impedance of the ensemble of the feed line. Okay. The Yagi and the environment. And if you change any one of these, you'll change uh, what you're tuning to. Uh, if you do a careful gamma match up here so that it's reasonably close to 50 ohms, you'll find that the uh, feed line doesn't affect it too much. But even, you know, somewhere in here is your center of gravity, and you're going to rotate this antenna around the center of gravity. And yes, you will find that in different directions, it's going to have a different characteristic impedance, although not by much. So Jay, what we have come up with here is that you can certainly measure the impedance of the directors and, and the reflectors, uh, but that is not uh, necessarily important to the Aggie as a whole. The director will be longer, therefore, if it were to resonate by itself, it would resonate at a lower frequency. Similarly, the directors would be higher. But um, what you really want is the ensemble impedance for the entire antenna. Now, I would recommend going on the internet and really looking up various Yagi design programs. If you look in the antenna book, uh, there are uh, articles in there uh, that are attached. Now, this is an old antenna book it's a few years old, but at the back of it is a CD, okay? And this has on it not only the text of the entire book, but also a whole bunch of supplemental programs. So if you go to the end of a chapter here, okay, you see the table of contents here. There are also supplemental articles on uh, the CD that you can uh, look at that will give you a lot more detail on uh, how you can uh, make things work. Now, the new book, if you get it, uh, you, those things are available for download electronically from the League website. Okay? So, if you're into making Yaggies, have fun. Um, there are people who make their own Yaggy, or you can just buy one. Uh, already put together. Uh, let's see, 
Cushcraft and Highgain, which are both MFJ companies, make quite a few of these, and I think MFJ makes one too. Um, and there are many other companies that make um, Yagis with varying degrees of uh, strength and uh, all that sort of thing. What you want to get is a modern Yagi, one that's been designed, um, and it will have unequal spacing between the elements. Uh, if you look at an antenna and it has equal spacing between the elements, you, that might be a tip off that that is an old design, like the A3 or something like that. Um, but take a look, there's lots of really cool stuff out there. Now, don't forget that if you're putting up a Yagi, that means a tower, a rotator, a mast, guy wires, or a very sturdy uh, mounting system several feet deep filled with concrete and rebar and the uh, uh, place that attaches to the tower. A tower project is a big, hairy deal. So there you have it. Here's our giveaway, number seven. Uh, it's a signal generator uh, for up to about 200 kilohertz. You can use for a variety of things. I built this from a kit. I had a little trouble building it, but I made it work. And uh, it works just as advertised. And you can get not only sine waves, but square waves, triangle waves, uh, ramps, going in either direction, all kinds of things that you might want out of this including it has a memory for an arbitrary waveform that you can put it in. Now, this is not the same as one you would use at RF. This only goes up about 100 kilohertz. But if you have an O-scope and you want to play with fun and find out what different waveforms look like and so on, this is really cool. Okay? So, um, please subscribe, please click like, and until we next meet, 73.